the Wikimedia Foundation is developing a tool called the Private Incident Reporting System. This is an online tool in which a user can send in a complaint about Wikipedia or someone they encountered in Wikipedia, and then there would be some process for addressing or resolving that complaint. I'm going to be talking about what's happened in the past in this space and give a Wikipedia community perspective, my individual perspective as a Wiki community member, on how I think this tool should work. How do you do? My name is Lane Raspberry. I'm Wikimedian at the School of Data Science at the University of Virginia. I'm also an organizer for Wikimedia LGBT and a longtime Wiki editor. Why do we need a complaint system? Did you know that people can complain in, in Wikipedia? There can be problems. So there's two kinds of problems. There can be a problem with the content. Someone can say, I disagree with what this Wikipedia article says, or I think this needs to be fact-checked, it's incorrect, these kinds of things. Uh, so that's a content problem. Another kind of problem that appears in Wikipedia is a conduct problem. Wikipedia is a user-generated content platform. You could say it's social media. Anyone can show up to the website. It, there's a virtual space in the, the wiki platform. People interact with each other. You can talk to each other, send messages. It's, it's an online platform. And you're supposed to behave. It says right in the rules. You have to be civil. There's a, a code of conduct. Some people are, are misbehave. They engage in misconduct or they're accused of being uh, engaging in, in misconduct. And in that case, there would be a conduct problem. And Wikipedia has ways of dealing <clears throat> with misconduct. These ways make, a, these ways of addressing misconduct, they make a lot of people happy. There's cases where people are not satisfied. We need more protection. And we experience this a lot in the LGBT community. If you're LGBT in Wikipedia or in any other website, or if you're editing LGBT conduct, content, then you're more likely to uh, be the target of harassment by some random person on the internet who shows up to engage in, in, in misconduct. So even though there's ways of dealing with conduct problems in Wikipedia, we need yet more. One of the features of Wikipedia is that it's community governed. That is, if someone says, I'm being harassed in, in Wikipedia, almost always it's gonna be peer-to-peer -peer support. Other Wikipedia community members will receive the complaint and, and try to resolve the problem. There's a series of these dispute resolution procedures. And again, dispute resolution, it can mean content, can also mean con conduct. Someone looking to see if, if somebody's actually being cruel or, or mean or behaving inappropriately, not just a, a fact-checking thing. So all of them are public. Whatever we do in Wikipedia, whether writing the articles, writing rules, evaluating complaints. This all happens in the public. We don't do this by email behind the scenes. You don't do this through a private committee that, that seats and discusses these things. There's exceptions. These, these things happen. But almost every judgment, every part of the judgment, what, what people say, the decisions they make, they, they happen in public. And this tool that the Wikimedia Foundation is developing, it's requested by the community. I want such a, a tool also a private incident reporting system. In this kind of system, somebody can say, I'm a wiki editor and this person is harassing me. I'm reporting that and I'd like for somebody to do something about it, but I don't know who and I need you to protect my identity. That's how this private incident reporting system would work. So what can go right with that and what can go wrong with that? That's, that's what I'm going to be talking through. First issue is should there even be a conduct reporting system? Can, can problems even happen? It's the year 2022 right now. I think most people who are engaged in internet culture, they know that if you go to a website, you can experience abuse. I first started looking into this issue uh, in 2012. In, in about 2013, I started working with another wiki editor, Dorothy Rose and we examined what were other websites doing. She's interested in online trolling, uh, online labor communities, how, how people are treated if they're contributing to a, a user-generated content platform. She could speak for, for herself. I just wanna say that uh, we, we were looking at all these websites together and our observation was that 
the major social media platforms, they really didn't acknowledge the existence of misconduct in their platforms at all. So you, it was hard to find papers or documentation, for example, that misconduct could happen in Facebook. Can you believe? People can misbehave in Facebook. It, it happens. But it wasn't obvious 10 years ago. Or misconduct happens in Twitter, but where do you find the evidence? Where do you find the data, data sources? How much misconduct happens in Twitter? 10 years ago, it was hard to find these kind of things. And also, because nobody was talking about misconduct in their platforms, everybody was embarrassed to be the first to say misconduct exists on the internet. And when Dorothy and I went to the Wikimedia Foundation and asked the staff there, what are you going to do about misconduct? There's this LGBT harassment, harassment against women, and harassment against all these other people. The position of the Wikimedia Foundation at the time, this, the staff that we talked to, was that they were never going to address this. This is always going to be a problem for the community to resolve. Community is going to have to work this out with other communities. It's the role of the Wikimedia Foundation to maintain the software and, and do some other things. But whatever happens in the platform, that's community governance. The community is going to have to manage that. The, the trend has changed. But at, at the time, what Dorothy and I came up with is what, what would we want of a reporting system if, if one existed? What, what would that look like, a private, private reporting system? Uh, so we started talking about it then, and we, we, we published published some requests in, in 2014, and I think these are still valid today. So what, what do we want? We want everyone who issues a complaint. So anyone can issue a complaint. That's, that's one thing. If someone issues a complaint, their privacy is protected. Okay. And anyone who issues a complaint, they should get an acknowledgement of their complaint. The complaint has been received. It will be processed duly. There's going to be a appropriate review of the complaint that the person issued. So that's that's thing one. You issue you issue a complaint, you get a receipt that your complaint is received. Second thing, when we have the resources, when we have the power to do so, we will refer the complaint to somebody who can address it meaningfully. What does address it meaningfully mean? I, I don't know, that's not really the important part of this. But supposing there's a nonprofit organization, maybe it's connected to Wikipedia, maybe it's outside of Wikipedia, and this nonprofit organization exists to help people who have a certain kind of complaint. So for example, if someone gets LGBT harassed, maybe there's an LGBT organization that supports people who get LGBT harassed, and we could send that complaint to that organization under certain circumstances if, if it makes sense to do so. Supposing there's an organization that supports women or supports people of a certain religion or they don't care about the kind of person but they can solve a certain kind of complaint. Like if you're only being harassed in Twitter, there can be an organization that specializes in Twitter harassment and if your Twitter harassment is the result of your Wikipedia editing, then they have something to do with that. We don't think that there's going to be ever be enough staff in the Wikimedia Foundation or community organization in the Wiki community that we can handle all kinds of complaints ourselves. We think that there's always going to have to be external partners who receive referrals under certain circumstances. And even if this system doesn't just send the complaint directly to that organization, there might be a process where someone could say, this is this kind of complaint, they'll categorize it, and maybe that person could use a referral to this recommended or trusted organization, give their complaint to them if they choose to do so, and take the kind of support that that organization offers. So that's two things that we want. The first, every time someone issues a complaint, they get a response and a receipt. We've received your complaint. And then additionally, if there's support available, the system makes a re referral to the organization or expert or process where the, the, the person who made the complaint can access support. Now note, not everyone who gets a complaint will get a referral to more support services. Unfortunately, there's a lot of complaints that just can't, can't be helped. So they'll have a receipt, they get no referral. Sorry, there's just not enough resources to go around. We can't help you and no one's going to talk to you further. That, that might be the case. Third thing, that we want is for somebody to watch the watchers. 
we need oversight of this entire process. It should be a third party that doesn't have a conflict of interest. I'd like it to go to a research institute. Every complaint that goes into this system, I'd like it to be de-identified for research, which means you strip out the elements of the complaint, which could endanger the person who made the complaint, upset their privacy, remove their privacy. De-identification is this process. It's a, it's a research process. Every university has, has a process for this. It, it's standardized. It's a thing that can be done. So you get this data set of every complaint that's been made through the reporting system and you give it to a university that doesn't doesn't have a stake in this. They're just researchers, they're trusted, they're procedural, and they compare the complaints with what kind of referral and support people are getting in response to the complaints. They categorize the complaints in, in different ways. They try to demographically classify the complaints and they report their findings, whatever they think is significant to them. Why do you need research oversight for this? Why do you need to send the identified complaints out? Well, we might see that a certain demographic of people are getting support and another demographic aren't getting support. And if we see that, we might say, we've got this limited pool of res resources, here's our money, here's our labor, and we can help only a certain number of people, we can't help everybody, but why is it that all of our resources are going to a certain demographic and this other resource is very vulnerable, they're getting attacked a lot, would we even know it? Or supposing there's a community that, that's getting harassed a lot or subject to a lot of misconduct. And for whatever reason, they're not vocal, they don't complain to other people, they just experience the harassment and no one knows that they're being harassed. If they're not getting support services, if they're not advocating for themselves for whatever reason, then the third party researcher could identify, here's a demographic of people who are pretty shy with the on wiki public processes for complaints. And because they're so shy, we haven't known that they've experienced years of, of harassment. It's just not visible by other data. But now that they have a private channel, since these third party researchers can look at it, we can publicize this and we can decide what we want to do as a Wikimedia community governance process to, to support these people. Uh, another reason, uh, this isn't quite fair, but I'm going to say it happens a lot. There's a lot of people who complain to Wikipedia about issues that, that may be a little bogus, like people who submit biographies of themselves saying, I want a Wikipedia article about me and here's all the wonderful things that I've done. Please don't talk about all the times I've been sued or arrested and here's the product that I'm selling. So th this happens several hundred times a day in Wikipedia. Somebody does this. And when we delete these articles, we say we have inclusion criteria, certain things are allowed to be in Wikipedia, certain things are not allowed to be in Wikipedia. They say, you're harassing me because you won't let me promote myself and my products and my organization in Wikipedia. That's a, this complaint system, I want it to receive all complaints. So it's not the, the concern of the complaint system to say some kind of people are allowed to complain and some people aren't. I, I want all complaints. We're not going to prejudge. Like It goes through the judgment process. There's a process and we accept these complaints. And in the midst of these complaints, whether they're legitimate or not, there's a heck of a lot of people who complain about the Wikimedia Foundation itself. These complaints are usually misplaced, but this is a sentiment that I have the idea that if the Wikimedia Foundation itself were judging the merit of these complaints, then they would be disinclined to say that there's people who complain about the Wikimedia Foundation itself. It's just not about the Wikimedia Foundation. It's what I was saying about Twitter, Facebook, and these other platforms. Organizations just have a bias and a conflict of interest in acknowledging that anyone in the world could ever complain about them. And I've got the idea, based on observations and past experiences, that as long as the arbitrator, the, the final judge of things, is the Wikimedia Foundation itself, then they're not going to be able to be neutral 
in evaluating the data. So, private incident reporting system, everyone, anyone who can, anyone can make an, a complaint. When someone makes a complaint, they get a receipt of having made their complaint. If we can make a referral, we make the referral. Sorry to the people who we don't have support for. And in any case, every complaint goes as a data set outside of the platform in the Wikimedia community to a third party neutral researcher who publishes de-identified findings and trends with the complaints. This is how I think it should be. This is my feedback for what I'm requesting. I'll also say about the private incident reporting system, I'm sorry to the technologists, software developers who are developing this because it's an impossible project. You will not find success. There's zero chance. It's extremely complicated. When you do release this, it's going, going to have a lot of problems, but it's going to be the first step and you've got to take the first step. Like we need this. It doesn't matter about the problems and it's okay if there's major failure points in the, the, the product that's developed because we need this now and we can get it better over time. Also, something I'll say about the Wikimedia Foundation, they tend to treat problems like this as if they're a technical problem, as if if you have a software developer and someone who makes the tools, then that will solve the problem. Unfortunately, this isn't primarily a technical problem. This is primarily a social problem, and you can't just throw software developers at social problems. You have to talk about things over time. So I encourage the project to go forward. Please think of the researchers, collaborate with communities, and delegate the social and ethical issues to the wiki community of volunteers for discussion. You can never sort out social and ethical problems if you're paid staff of an organization that is giving you a conflict of interest. Thank you so much for hearing me out.